the most gracious, the most merciful. As Muhammad, peace be upon him, narrated, if any man travels on a road in search of knowledge, Almighty Allah will cause him to travel on one of the roads of paradise. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Tarithu. Thank you very much for watching my videos and your wonderful support to make the channel a grand success. We are a family, a partner. Please share and subscribe our channel if you haven't done so far. We as a team can work together to convert challenges into opportunities and opportunities into success stories. These success stories can be monetized into value addition in the world by large. Thank you very much for your precious time. Today I am going to discuss my lecture number first on FCC unit startup procedure. FCC unit startup procedure lecture number one. Okay. Fluid Carnatic Cracking FCC Unit Lecture Number 1 FCC Unit Startup Procedure Okay, Key Takeaway Points Lecture Number 1 Startup Procedure FCC Startup Procedure Okay The first is a Reactor Regenerator Sections and Fractionation Number 2 Steam Out the Reactor and Main Column Number 3 Start the Main Air Block Number three, a light air heater. Number four, inventory defractionation section. Prepare the regenerator for catalyst inventory. Number six, a transferring a catalyst to the regenerator. Heat up the catalyst inventory. Start the gas concentration section or gas compressor. Number nine, circulate catalyst. Number ten, operation of optimal feed distributions charge oil to the reactor riser okay today we are going to discuss topic 10 reactor steam out startup light the air heater inventory fractionations prepare the regenerator transferring catalyst to the regenerator heat up the catalyst inventory start the gas concentration unit gas compressor circulating catalyst and operation of the optimist of feed distribution okay Okay, abscess unit startup procedure. For startup all utility system must be in operation and unit flare and drain system must be ready for operation. Ensure that a sufficient equilibrium catalyst has been loaded into hopper. Inventory of the reactor regenerator section is approximately 260 tons that the section or the refinery which I have worked. It is recommended to have a surplus of at least 30 tons available in the hopper to compensate for the losses during the startup period. Okay. First, reactor regenerator section and fractionation section. Number one. The normal startup of the unit can be divided into different sections. Number one, steam out the reactor and main column, heat up the catalyst section. Number two, Heat up the fractionation sections. Number three, load catalyst. Number four, start the gas compressor. Number fifth, circulate catalyst. Number six, cut off to the risers. Establish a normal operating conditions. Okay, abscess unit start up the steam out reactor and main column. The unit must be completely flushed, have also office plates installed and be otherwise complete. Number two, reactor vapor line vent should be blocked and blinded. Number three, the blind should be removed from the reactor vapor line near the main column. Number four, remove the blank from the main column. High points vent wells open the valve as a couple of turns. Close the wells located in the first and second stage sections and discharge lines of the gas compressor that is unit gas compressor sections start nitrogen to the reactor instrument a dry gas at once make sure the regenerated and spent catalyst or slide wells are fully shut off start steam to the risers to the feed injections point to the reactor steepers and to the spent catalyst a standpoint or blast point as the reactor is purged and heated up the steam vapors will go out the reactor vapors line into the main column. Continually drain condensate at the risers, regenerator and main column low point. 
Okay, start the main ear blow. Number one, be sure all D and DG points and instrument on the reactor regenerator structures are in service. Number two, start the main ear blow as the fractionation section is pressurized up to with the a fuel gas. Refer to the manufacturing instructions manual for main air blower startup procedure. Number three, differential of pressure of between the reactor and regenerator should be maintained at the negative a point one bar G that one point five psig. This will ensure that any leakage up through the slide well will put steam into regenerator rather than air into the reactor. Okay. Note, the steam in the risers and steeper acts as a buffer between the regenerator containing air and a main column which contains some fuel gas. The steam from the reactor, the bottom of the main column and the steeper will carry the fuel gas upward into the overhead system so there will not normally be any fuel gas into the lower part of the main column. Number four, open the recirculating catus slide valves and the catus cooler slide wells which will allow heated air to back flow up the stand pipes to the upper regenerator. Okay, light the air heater. As soon as the temperature stabilizes on the main air blow discharge, light the direct fired air heater according to the manufacturing instruction or winder instructions. Number two. Begin to heat up the regenerator at maximum rate of 110 degrees Celsius, 200 degree F, to the target temperature of, of 540 degree C or 1000 degree F. Number three, begin a water circulations or through the catalyst cooler. Number four, start fluidizing air or to the upper regenerator fluffing rings and to the catalyst cooler, fluidizing the lenses, that is a compressors must be put into operation. Note, when the regenerator temperature reaches at 200 degrees, 30 degrees Celsius, begin atomizing steam and nozzle. Cooling steam flows to the torch oil nozzles. When the air heater is light, the flue gas steam regenerator and the flue gas treatment must be in operation. Once the startup of FCC unit is accomplished, the fuel gas to the direct fire heater must be blinded. Okay, next is the inventory, the fractionation section. Okay, inventory, the fractionation section. Number one, import a feed oil from battery element raw oil search term. Number two, the temperature of the main column overhead must be maintained 110 degrees Celsius or 230 degrees up to minimize a steam condensation in the main column. Number three, while the regenerator is heating up a raw oil, a feed can be brought in through the startup filling line to the bottom of the main column, control the rate of through throttling the discharge well of the raw oil charge pump. Check this pump carefully for hot bearing, vibration, etc. While observing the raw oil level in the column bottom, the addition cold charge in the main column will condense some steam since it passes counter current with steam over a five disc and donuts. Therefore, any time oil is added to the main column, it must be done slowly until the oil is heated up. It is important to accelerate the regenerator from the torch oil system during a filling procedure by installing blinds at the torch oil guns. Okay, uh, this is unit startup, uh, prepare the regenerator of our catalyst inventory. Number one, the heating of the main column and the regenerator have been going on at the same time. Completely inspect the reactor regenerator structures once every hour until the direct fire heater outlet temperature is in the range of 620 to 650 degrees Celsius, that is 1150 to 1200 degrees, and once every two hours thereafter. We have to check follow number one. That all equipment is free to expand, is not contacting any structural members. Number two, 
that the expansion joint tie slots are loose. Number three, that the cutters lines are free to move. Number four, that the small piping, especially instrument and electrical cable, is not under strain. Okay, when the regenerator temperature exceeds 230 degrees Celsius or 450F, start atomizing steam and nozzle cooling steam close to the torch oil nozzles. As soon as the regenerator temperature are above 230 degrees Celsius, the differential pressure transmitters across the spent cutter slide wells can be placed in service. Okay, this meter should read the same as the reactor regenerator differential pressure. It is measured the same two pressures. If it does not, this is an indication that there may be condensate in the spent catalyst or standby. The water can either be drained or from the spent catalyst sample point if the steam is shut off or preferably it can be slowly drained into the regenerator where it will vaporize and exit with the flue gases. Manually open the slide well as a small amount to continuously drain the stand pipe so that the water does not accumulate. The main point is that all of the condensate is kept drained and if the drain into the regenerator it is done slowly so that when the water vaporizes, it will not cause a big pressure surge in the regenerator which could push air into the reactor. Okay, when the air heated temperature exceeds 315 degrees Celsius that is 600 degrees F, start hot bolting the flanges and manuals and systematically hot bolt the entire regenerator and a flue gas system. Repeat this procedure when air heated order temperature exceeds 500 degree, 540 degree C or 1000 degree F. When the temperature in the regenerator is 540 degree C or 1000 F, with air flowing through both low regenerator combustors and recirculating catalysts and catalyst cooler lines into the upper regenerator, catalysts can be loaded into regenerator. Set the main air blower air rate at the design rate and adjust the air heater to maintain an order temperature of 620 to 650 degrees Celsius or 1150 to 1200 degrees F. Okay, abscissa unit startup transferring a catalyst to the regenerator. Ensure that the following atoms have been accomplished before loading a catalyst. All the slide wells, differential pressure, a transmitter should be in service and they are a low signal selector override operable. B. Check the, that the aeration air in the entering all regenerator instrument point and the slide well packing. C. Check that the cooling and automatic steams are entering the torch oil and water supply nozzle. D. Check that the steam is not being used as the purge at the regenerator catalyst standpipe as it will be condensed and make a mud of the catalyst and cause a problem with circulation. E. Make sure that the catalyst cooler regenerated catalyst and spent catalyst or slide wells are fully closed. Take whatever action is necessary to guard against unauthorized opening of the regenerated catalyst or slide well such as engaging a hand wheel and lock it. F. Be certain that the minimum amount of fluffing air is going to the upper regenerator fluffing ring and the catalyst cooler. G. Water must be circulated through the catalyst cooler. If it is not, the tubes must be cooled at 275 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees F prepare to start water circulation to avoid a thermal shock. Okay, heating up the catalyst inventory. If the design air rate approximately 175,000 meter cube per hour is maintained or through the regenerator at an air heater outlet temperature 620 degrees C to 650 degrees C or 1150 to 1200 degrees F, the catalyst must be heated 
by both the air heater and a uh, some minimum amount of the torch oil to achieve the target a uh, temperature of 675 degree C. okay note due to low initial cutters density in the lower regenerator it is desirable that the cutters heat up begin or using the air heat only once cutters circulation is started the density will increase in the lower regenerator and torch oil fire can then be started an injection of torch oil is possible at the temperature higher than 14 degree c due to interlock between torch oil control valves and uh, the combustion temperature okay the flow of hot air or through the regenerator will fluidize catalyst lighting it to the, the upper regenerator when the differential pressure appears across the cutter's circulation slide valves begin a cutter circulation to the lower regenerator section using the lower regenerator temperature controller on manual adjust the cutter's circulation rate obtain 7 to 70 to 100 kg per meter cube density in the low regenerator, do not open the cutter's cooler slide valves at this time as this would add to the heat removal from the vessel. Okay, number three. If torch oil is used to heat up the regenerator, the minimum temperature at which it can be fired is 400 degree, 450 degree C or 800 degree, 850 degree F. If an increase in low regenerator temperature is observed, the torch oil has ignited. If no temperature change is observed, the torch oil has not ignited and its use should be discontinued until the cutter's temperature has risen further 30 degree C or 50 degree F. Remember, field operator should regularly check the LC lines or low pressure steam lines uh, to the torch oil guns, down steams are hot. There is to be sure that a steam is going up to the nozzles for cooling and to prevent a plugging of the nozzles when they are not in use. Okay, start the gas consolidation unit a gas compressor. Number one. In order to control a cutter's circulation a bit in the reactor regenerator, it is necessary to have a constant pressure on the fractionation section or fractionation column. Okay, as we discussed earlier, it is necessary to keep a small fuel gas approach or through the main column receiver or to the flare to ensure that an air concentration does not build up. Therefore, a pressure control at the time is obtained by manually setting a fuel gas makeup rate to the LCO steeper, light acyclic oil steeper, vapor return line which allows the over a pressure control at the main column receivers to maintain a steady receiver pressure while venting a small cartridge gas flow to the flame. Number two. It is advisable to start up a wet gas compressor early and it operating uh, smoothly before attempting to circulate a catalyst. Set the pressure control in preparation for the compressor startup as follows. Number one, set the main column receiver a leave a flare pressures to control the system of pressures at 0.7 or G or 10 degree, 10 a PSA. Okay. Check that the compressor spillback control valves are open and they are gate valves downstream. The spillback control valves are open. Next, open the sections well of fully. Okay, circulating catalyst. When the catalyst and the regenerator are at 535 degree C or 1000 degree F, the unit is ready to start circulating catalyst. Stop the oil circulation to the LCO and HCO circuit, but continue a bottom circulation through the steam regenerator system to bottom system at the main column 
hot. When cattle circulation is started, a large quantity of the fine scatters may be generated via steam usage and could end up throughout the LCU and HCU circuit. Okay, so, so if there were still circulating, continue to increase the regenerated temperature up to 675 degree C or 1250 degree F as the reactor temperature is increased. Okay, good circulation of the catalyst up to the using a lift a ste steam requires a minimum steam velocity 4.57 meter cube per second and the top of the riser the correct steam rate of the fluidizing velocity must be maintained as they have mentioned in the report. Okay, okay, operation of Optimax a feed distributor. The Optimax feed distributors are designed to operate with 2.58% dispersion steam. Each distributor has its own steam supply piping into the slide of the distributor a barrel. The dispersion steam must be in service at all times with FCC startup or normal operation or shunted active soaring progress. Whenever catalyst are placed at the rise, the feed line to each optimum a feed distributor has an isolation block walls. The isolation block walls should be used only when there is a problem with the particular distributor. Optimum a feed distributors should not be taken out of service or during a normal turn down operation. The feed and the steam line to each distribution has a flow orifice with differential delta P taps to provide an indication of a balanced flow. During operation, the differential pressure or DP can be checked to verify equal flow to each distributor. Prior to start of catalyst circulation, a steam should be commissioned to all optimums of a distributor. This can be initiated when the reactor vessel is being steam out, a minimum flow of 100% of design steams or rate is 4366 4, kg per hour should be maintained through the four distributors with an operating a target 120% of design steam rate to establish up before catalyst circulations begins. The high steam rate is to minimize the chance that catalyst could backfill through the system. Okay. Okay. After catalyst circulation is started, verify that the proper steam rate is being maintained to each distributor as the reactor heats up. If feasible, check the steam flow or fist differential pressures to verify equal flow to the each distributor. Start feed to each optimum of a distributor. Simultaneously, after feed has been started, the total steam rate to the distributor can be reduced to 100% of the design. When the design of feed rate has been achieved, record the pressure to each optimum of a distributor and the differential pressures across each flow office. The pressure and differential pressure should be approximately the same which indicates equal flow through the each distributor. Okay, this, this was my last slide. Now we are going to conclude our today lecture. One reactor regenerator suction and fractionation suction. Steam out the reactors and main column. Start the main air blower. Light the air heater. Inventory the fractionation or suction. Prepare the regenerator for catalyst inventory, transferring catalyst to the regenerator, heat up the catalyst inventory, start the gas construction unit, gas compressor, circulate a catalyst and operation of the optimum of feed distributor. Okay, remaining topic we are going to discuss tomorrow. Okay, my next topic will be The, the abscess unit startup procedure and gas concentration section. Okay.
these are a few references okay uh, together i will achieve more please do not hesitate to send me your feedback comments t.pursu.dr at mouse.tv thank you very much and stay blessed